One of the most commonly asked questions I get as a software developer that has been developing apps for the past four years is, what tech stack do you use to develop your apps? I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time now, but I keep procrastinating. 2000 years later. So with no further delay, let's get into it. For those of you guys who might not know, I'm a full stack developer and I develop apps for both mobile and web. I won't say I develop for one platform more than the other. I've approximately built the same amount of web apps and mobile apps, but for the sake of this video, we're going to focus on web technologies. Let me know if you guys want me to make a video about the tech stack I use for mobile app development. So like I mentioned earlier, I do full stack development. So let's start with the front end side of things. For the front end, I develop all my apps using React. And for my framework, I use Next.js. I started off writing plain React for about a year. I loved it. It got the job done. Then I heard about Next.js and how it supercharges React and I decided to try it out. It was absolutely amazing. The transition from React to Next.js was very smooth because Next.js is still heavily based on React. So the way you do things in React in most cases is the same with Next.js except from Next.js has its own special features like server actions, app router, and server side rendering. But honestly, if I wasn't writing React on Next.js, the next front end framework I would choose has to be Angular. Angular is more common amongst most enterprise web applications because of how it's structured. But I will say it does have a large learning curve compared to its counterparts like Vue and React. But it's definitely worth it in the long run. But I will say personally, I don't write Angular so I can't really say much about it. But if you're a beginner and you don't use any front end framework right now and you're looking to learn a new front end framework, I will say don't choose Angular because it's used for enterprise applications and also don't choose React or Next.js because I told you it's awesome. I would advise you to experiment with any front end framework of your choice and see if you like it. But I will say definitely check out roadmap.sh to see a very detailed learning route for the framework of your choice. But I already looked at it before recording this video. The easy easiest to learn is Vue.js because it's a light JavaScript framework, followed by React, then Angular. React is sitting right there in the dead center because it's not so difficult to learn and it's also widely used and it also has a large community as well. So that's why it makes sense for most people to learn React. But like I said, I would definitely advise you to, you know, experiment with all of them and see whichever one you like best. Every framework has its pros and its cons, so keep that in mind. All right, so moving on to the backend side of things, which is my favorite. So for my backend, I actually follow an API driven development. I mainly develop all my backend services using PHP and MySQL. I write all my backend logic using vanilla PHP no framework. PHP communicates with my SQL database and my client Next.js communicates with my backend through an API endpoint. And before you guys come for me in the comment section, I know the same thing can be achieved without introducing a new language PHP into the picture. You can still develop your backend services in let's say Node.js and still be able to communicate with my SQL database. But the thing is that JavaScript can't natively communicate with my SQL database because it runs on a browser. You will definitely need to install a third party package that act as a driver to help you connect to a MySQL database. But PHP on the other hand natively supports SQL connections and queries, so performing any kind of database logic in PHP is going to be more straightforward compared to JavaScript. And also one of the perks of API driven development is that you can utilize that same API endpoint for any other application. Let's say my most recent project Scribble, that's a web application and in the future I plan on developing a mobile application for that project. In that case I don't have to worry about any backend stuff, I can just focus on developing developing the UI and just hit the same endpoints that my web application hits. If I choose, I can also develop any kind of integrations with let's say Slack or Discord using that same API endpoint. That's just one general advantage of using API driven development. But that's not the actual reason I chose PHP over Node.js. The reason I actually write PHP over Node.js is because I was exposed to PHP before Node.js and I got used to it before I even knew what Node.js was. That was what I learned first and like they say, you can't betray your first love. So. It is what it is. And also, I think it's important for me to say it also heavily depends on what I'm developing. There's some really small projects I work on that doesn't really require me to develop a whole um, PHP backend for. In that case, I can use something like Superbase or Firebase to um, you know, develop the whole backend service. Superbase is actually very, very nice. If you haven't tried it, I would say definitely give it a go because it's like the SQL alternative for Firebase. It's truly amazing. Now, moving on to hosting. Full stack isn't really complete if you don't talk about how you host the applications. I host all my front-end apps that I develop with Next.js using Vercel or Vercel 
Is it Versoul or Versel? I don't know. Versel is a hosting service created by the creators of Next.js. Hosting my apps on Versel is very easy and seamless. The building and deployment process is a breeze. It helps with continuous integration and development in the sense that I can quickly write an update on VS Code push it to my git repository. Versal is already connected to your github and whenever you push code into the repository it's connected to, it triggers a deployment process. That deployment process builds your app, it runs tests, then finally deploys it to the public. And all this without you having to do anything. This is the easiest deployment I've ever done in my career, like I don't even know how else to explain it. It is truly amazing. They have a free plan which if you use for your personal project, you will be just fine. But if you develop apps that people are going to use, then I would say you might exceed the free bandwidth and you might have to pay for the hosting service which then it can it can get pretty expensive for my backend services since i use php and my sql i use a web hosting service from hostinga they are not sponsoring this video by the way the servers from that web hosting service is what's going to house your api endpoints it also comes with a free mysql database which i don't think you're ever going to use up they also let you scale the server as your users grow with very very little input from you so that's also amazing. All right, guys, I just wanted to pop in to let you guys know that I've started a membership on YouTube and you can become a member. Some of the perks of being a member of this channel includes early access to my weekly videos. You also get a fancy badge beside your name in the comment section. You also get to see member only posts in the community tab on YouTube. And the biggest perk of all is that you get a free monthly call with me where we can discuss anything from career plans to learning structures and also project reviews, like literally anything you want to talk about about you get one free monthly call with me so go ahead and click the first link in the description to become a member of this channel i've talked about the three major things so let's also talk about the little things that also matter let's talk about authentication for authentication i use next.js but not until the beginning of this year i've always developed my own authentication flow by myself it worked but it was it was very stressful whenever i start a new project i always develop the authentication flow first just to get it out of the way because that's that's probably the most difficult thing in that project. But recently, I discovered NextAuth, which is an authentication library that handles all your authentication for you. It allows the traditional email and password authentication, and it also allows social login, like login with Google, login with Apple, GitHub, Microsoft, and many more. Once your user is authenticated, it automatically creates a session with whatever data you select, and it also lets you, the developer, to choose an expiration date for that session. That's actually very cool because you don't understand how much stress that takes away from you. But I've also heard about Click. It's actually the trending authentication library within the development community right now. I'm yet to try it out, but if you guys want me to make a video about Clerk, let me know in the comment section. And also, Clerk, if you're willing, you can decide to sponsor my next video. And also, I use AWS S3 for storage. It's a very easy and simple storage solution for web apps and mobile apps and whatever kind of development you're doing. Some other little things I use on the front end is Tailwind CSS. It saves me from writing unnecessary CSS code. I don't know, who, who likes writing CSS code? Not me definitely not me i absolutely hate 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 writing css code i also use font on some library for icons tell me what, what what's a web application without icons like just just tell me what's a web app without icons font awesome provides you with a variety of icons for free and it's also very easy 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 to integrate with your you know web applications whether you're using next.js vue.js angular or react it's very easy to integrate with your web apps so i 10 out of 10 recommend font awesome i sometimes use firebase mainly for real-time communications in the application. For example, let's say I need to handle an email verification. I use Firebase to monitor the user's verification status in real time. So like when I send the user the verification email, I set up a listener to observe changes in the user's verification state. Once the user clicks the verification link in the email, Firebase automatically updates the user's verification state. My app receives that update in real time, allowing the user to continue without having to refresh the page. That's one of my most used cases for Firebase. I know it's also used for like other backend operations but that's mainly what i use it for and i also use it for notifications when i'm developing mobile apps as well but yeah guys that's my complete tech stack as a full stack developer let me know if you guys have any questions in the comment section let me know in the comments if you guys want me to make a separate video talking about the tech stack i use in developing mobile applications also don't forget to join my coding community on discord i'm also going to leave a link to that in the description thanks again for watching don't forget to like this video share it and also subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video